start off myself actually with a question to you, Ben, because you started off uh, telling off or basically wiping off the concept of uh, branding, nation branding. It was full of cliches, it was all to do with selling, and it wasn't really very appealing. But we heard from, from Markus that, uh, that these stories have to be told, they have to be built. And we heard later on in order that you can actually, as a country, find yourself in situations where you don't have much of a choice, where your story is there whether you want it or not, and where you have to act to influence the way it is being told. What do you make of that notion, and do you maintain your, your um, opposition to the concept of yes. the nation? <clears throat> yes, yes, I do. Still, I liked Marcus' uh, contribution, uh, and I as a son uh, of a salesman, know that branding is necessary. Uh, <clears throat> we have different and other concepts. Uh, identity, for example, I was very critical, and I've written a report on that, uh, very critical identity. We don't know what it is, but we do need it, uh, a concept of that. L let, me add, Anna, let me add two, two small points, uh, just to give some more thoughts. Um, Entering Denmark via Kastrup, you're confronted with a huge brand sign, uh, Denmark, the happiest nation of the world, something like that. It's from Carlsberg. Uh, whenever I read, hear, um, th see this, I'm wondering, how can a nation be happy and be the happiest? So this, this is the self-conception, knowing that among the all welfare states, Denmark has the lowest life expectancy. Knowing that if you go to Germany, to Norway, or whatever, to Sweden, uh, as a Dane, you can live not for months, but for years longer than staying in Denmark. Second, um, I read the first report, Markus, uh, the Finns um, published, uh, branding the nation, um, summing up this, uh, the concept was we can solve the problems of the world. I tested that with my German colleagues and there were two results. The first was an everlasting laugh uh, because we tried that 150 years ago, started with that concept and it ended up in a disaster in the middle of the last century. So. No German concept like that would be uh, uh, permitted. Uh, and the second thing is, and, and that's what, what I'm more or less critical, um, you, this branding, this brand would, will only function in Finland. It will not function in Germany, and I think it will not function in Denmark and or in Sweden or wherever. Only inside the country. So this is, maybe it's a different kind of, of, of type of branding, uh, telling the people what they can afford, what they can do. Uh, well, m maybe one should tell that the Germans because they, they don't believe in the future anymore. Uh, so you can't start any uh, visions or innovating strategies in Germany for, for, for since years. I was still, I was wondering, and uh, so this is my, my critic. We do need it, I, well, it's, it's okay, but there are contradictions and there are critics about, against it. Thank you very much. It's an interesting one, this business of ranking countries and happiness. I was also told, or actually read in a book, this is not my original idea, but somebody, a wise person wrote in a book that somebody who's happy uh, is also reflecting on his own expectations. So if you're not expecting very much of life, chances are you'll be very happy. So you could possibly be in a nation which is not asking enough of life. Just an idea. Paul, I don't know if you would you like to comment on this notion put forward by Bernd of the internal and the external workings of a, a national identity. How do those two play together? And do you agree with, with uh, Bernd Henningsen's notion that they can work internally but not externally? Yeah, very much so. I think uh, in a Danish context, it would be almost impossible to think of, of, of um, politicians, elected officials, agreeing on, on, on what the actual brand or slogan should be. I, I wouldn't venture uh, to, to, to start such a process because that would lead uh, nowhere. It might have a, 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 some advantages internally in a country if you need to sit down and, and define who you are, but, but Danes would, I, I don't think that Danes would, would, would wish to do that. 
Um, and in terms of brand, you, you're perfectly right. I mean, you might call it image, you might call it uh, something else, but, but I can assure you, once your embassy is burning, you know that you have a, a problem with either your brand or your country's image or whatever uh, you might call it. So, so it's, it's there, and we just need to define a, a notion that, that uh, reflects it. Thank you. Yeah, the, coming back to the, the Finnish case, um, it was not a slogan. Finishing the finish, finishing it off for now. It was not a slogan. It was an internal vision for how they wanted to work. So they didn't go out and tell the world we are going to be this. The Finns would never do that. They are too too humble to do that. The point is that it's it's the identity that they want to build, the posi position they want to reach with time by doing things like the solved platform that I introduced. So it's it's working behind the scenes this, this uh, vision. And interestingly. Um, when the when OECD's PISA report was published, uh, the Finnish students ranked uh, elementary school students ranked uh, highest in Europe on problem-solving skills. So they've really taken up a theme that they can prove that we are really good at this. Uh, we can work towards that. So it becomes credible when you see uh, inf statistics like that, which of course came after they they, they uh, came about. They came up with this vision. Uh, so they are, they, are, they, are, they are doing their best to uh, implement it in different ways. Thank you. I'm close to now, and I hand you over to one of our speakers tomorrow, but for the benefit of all time, you could identify yourself, so you may all know who's speaking, and we will give you a comment. Of course. Thank you very much. My name is Annika Remba. I'm head of the um, Swedish Institute. And, uh, and I will talk about other things tomorrow, but I think that, that part of this... Um, question whether we talk about branding or cultural diplomacy or other things is really how we want to be perceived of course by other people and we have numbers of reasons for for being wanting to be perceived in special ways and wanting to be attractive now I think you're pointing all at something very important is of course that we have to be true I mean you, you in order to do a good work you can and I agree with you Bent you could never use old cliches, but I think the work today that countries are doing, that regions and places are doing, is much more clever than that. I, I, I do think we have come further. Um, the other thing is, is that I think that yes, we have to look not only outside our countries and, and how people are looking at us, but also inside our own countries and ask ourselves, do we have the same view? And, and we actually did that. I think we've spent years and years and years in asking what is people outside thinking about Sweden. And we've looked into all the rankings and indexes. And then finally, we got to ask ourselves, do Swedes of all ages, of all political views, of all origin, born in Sweden, not born in Sweden, have the same views as, as people outside of Sweden? And we ended up finding, yes, basically, and that was, I felt, very comforting, because then at least we knew that we were somewhat on the right track. But I think these questions are extremely important. Next question to ask is, of course, do we have a view on the outside? And that's going back to listening and asking and, 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 and being in dialogue. Because I think our own views are as outdated and old as we sometimes perceive that the outside's views, and you, you mentioned it for, for Denmark. So we have to reflect on that and understand that it's not, this is something that goes both ways. Thank you. Thank you very much. In a way, uh, sort of uh, an attempt, if I may paraphrase, at solving the riddle of, of the branding and cultural diplomacy, saying you can do both, but you, you have to make sure that the two uh, balance out. Or do you agree with this notion? I mean, is, is, is it, you were saying in your introduction that you, your conclusion was they're not contradictory. But are there moments uh, when you do uh, branding where you're sort of stuck with one frozen image of your country and then you have cultural diplomacy where you listen, you have dialogues and you're, you're more of a, in a two-way interaction with the rest of the world? Would you agree with that? Yeah, to a certain extent, I think that, that 
if you look at, at branding, that's something you do for your own country. That's what a diplomat like me is being paid for. I, I, I work for, for, for Denmark's interest. Um, whereas when you're doing cultural diplomacy, and, and, and Michael is, is doing that, you're not necessarily working just for, for, for Denmark. Uh, you're working uh, in order to bring people together, to, to, to facilitate uh, cultural exchanges. So, so, um, so, so it might be a bit uh, simplified when I said there's no contradiction. I don't think there is in general. But there could, in certain aspects, be you would put your emphasis different if, if what you're doing is, is, is basically uh, nation branding. Uh, in comparison to, to, uh, uh, to what the, the Danish Cultural Institute is doing. But that's exactly why we have different institutions, and I think in Sweden as well, uh, there's a division of labor between us because we're not doing the same thing. We shouldn't be doing the same thing. We can, we can support each other in certain ways, but, but we are not doing the same thing. Thank you. Right. One more question. We have two more questions. Um, this is from a previous speaker, but for yeah. the interest of those who forget very quickly, um, yeah, Marie-Louise Plessen. I'm German and I'm working on an international level, um, doing um, mostly transnational uh, concept for um, major uh, historical exhibitions, but also commenting on many issues on um, history and actual politics and contemporary art. And I'm a member of um, several European panels and, and uh, well, yeah, well, scientific groups. But I just wanted to give the example, as I'm living in France, that um, the identity of a nation can really slip away and, and, and skip elsewhere, because uh, within three years, uh, even before uh, Hollande came to power, the actual president, no one anymore would ever uh, dare uh, mention uh, the term of la grande nation. And this was a branding that was really sold uh, from the time of Louis XIV onwards, and now it's just an empty slogan. So it's, uh, it's turned to its opposite, and I, th I think the concept of branding and I would rather agree with the skepticism of um, uh, Mr. Um, Henningsen, is really something that is very suspicious because it depends on the perspective and also on two ends of the dialogue that is kept. And I would like to close uh, with the um, a quote of a very famous German um, Comic, um, it's not a comic, how do you call that? Comica, yeah? Comedian. A comedian, and his name is Val um, Karl Valentin from Munich. And he said the very, very wise uh, phrase, niemand ist fremder in der Fremde als der Fremde. And it's quite difficult to translate it, uh, but you could maybe understand. No one is get stranger in, in the outside world than the one uh, that is a stranger. And I think that really keeps it in, in the right shape. Thank you very much. Let's, since we are uh, approaching the end of our, of our seminar, here one more comment and then we have uh, response and feedback to both of them together. Again, if you tell us who you are before we begin. Pinne from the Swedish Embassy in Copenhagen. I uh, recognize the strategic uh, platform that you, Markus, introduced to us. And uh, Annika is also uh, probably uh, is going to talk about tomorrow. However, um, another question. Um, <clears throat> I was... Uh, the Nordic uh, communication platform that was also mentioned in your presentation, Markus, uh, uh, I, my question to you, uh, Ole, is have, have you been in any way involved in this process of making this uh, platform, this Nordic platform? I'm asking you because I was, uh, it was an eye-opener for me to, to, to hear that, that you didn't work from a uh, common strategic platform uh, in the uh, uh, foreign ministry in Denmark. Uh, and secondly, my second question is, um, do you see any dangers in having such a Nordic strategy? Uh, I was, uh, this Expo, Expo case uh, somehow gave me this idea that 
It could be a small-scale Kalma uh, union uh, collapse. Uh, what do you think about this? Are there dangers in having such a strategy? Sorry, I don't think there is a platform uh, yet. The, 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 initiative I mentioned, the initiative I mentioned is underway. We are trying to create, and it, it's outside uh, official channels at the moment. So it's just uh, um, uh, something that we'll try to launch next year. But I think there is a, a, an internal strategy going on with, within the Nordic Council of Ministers, though. Uh, perhaps someone from the, the Nordic Council can uh, inform us about that. And secondly, I think it's a good idea to have a common platform, uh, especially we, when we go out globally uh, to China, Japan, uh, North America, to have a common purpose for our efforts, a common story that we can uh, uh, build in different ways. Ben, your response to uh, Dr. Von Pless's notion that yeah. Japan has shown, is that a key example of what you would call a cliche history? I, 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 I don't know how the... the uh, uh, the correct um, English for the proverb is that the, we are playing with the fire uh, in regard to image building and uh, um, and uh, nation branding because uh, we can if if we can rely on the people and in the institutions, then it's fine. If we can't, it will be it will become very very dangerous. And the worst example we are confronted with at the moment is. Russia, Putin, and Novorossiya. This is a, a way of branding which is really dangerous. So we must be aware of that. Thank you. And now, as if by magic, a response to the other question on the Nordic brand from... from um... Yes, um, there is uh, just a piece of information. There is an initiative from the Nordic ministers in all the Nordic countries, and the ministers of Nordic cooperation, that has asked... Um, their own ministries and, and institutes to try to launch, um, I wouldn't say brand strategy, but it's, it's a common strategy to, in order to collaborate on Nordic um, projects, like the Nordic call in Washington DC, which was a Nordic collaboration. So, and may I just add one thing? In Shanghai, yes, we did do, have separate um, pavilions, but there was a very, very strong Nordic collaboration. So we, we, we managed. Final, final remark from your neighbor. Mm. Thank you. Uh, first of all, my congrats to the Nordic countries for being able to put up this joint show in, in Osaka. Uh, we've so far managed only one UNESCO case, the Baltic chain. Uh, and the song festivals. But um, Professor Henningsen, you uh, voiced this, uh, you were the skeptic voice. Uh, at the Latvian Institute, we also do like uh, the Swedish Institute and like the you know, Danish Foreign Ministry, we also do some branding. And what we, when I'm on the radio, when I'm trying to explain to people the strong points of Latvia that we could use for branding outside and is that we get telephone calls that exactly tell us the same. We have a high suicide rate, the poverty in the regions, what are you talking about? It's all bullshit, you know, no branding, nothing. But I think that is why we need to make these efforts not only abroad, but also inside the country to get the message across that there are some strong points that we can be proud of as a matter of raising one's self-confidence, not only yeah, here and there. Thank you.